If you put gunpowder into an iron tube, pack it with a stone ball, light the fuse, and cover your ears, you can launch the stone ball. Although the sound is loud, the power is limited, and it might even explode sugar. To ensure the gunpowder burns thoroughly and the range is farther, you lengthen the cannon barrel. When the gunpowder explodes, the pressure at the back suddenly increases, so you make the walls of the cannon thicker. The body of the cannon is segmented and reinforced with iron hoops, and the projectile is upgraded from a stone ball to a sturdy iron ball. When firing, you first pack the gunpowder inside and compress it with a long ram, then insert the iron ball projectile and light the fuse. At the moment the gunpowder explodes, it generates high-pressure gas that pushes the iron ball out of the cannon. However, a new problem arises. The recoil is too strong. When the cannon fires, the cannon body jerks back wildly. So you cast cannon arms on both sides of the cannon to secure it to the carriage. Just securing it is not enough. You also add wheels to the carriage, fixing brackets on both sides, allowing soldiers to drag it onto the battlefield. For defense, there's a fixed platform, and for field battles, a wheeled carriage. Each scenario has its own solution. On the battlefield, how do you achieve precise targeting? You install a hatch at the back of the cannon and set a sight at the muzzle. Horizontally, the gunner aims at the target using the hatch and the sight, and vertically, they adjust the angle of the cannon's tail to raise or lower the cannon's elevation. Additionally, by varying the amount of gunpowder used, you can change the range. Though precise aiming is not possible, it is sufficient to hit large targets like city walls and military formations. The ammunition is also also varied. Solid iron balls are used to break down city walls, and grape shot is used to destroy enemies. Congratulations, you have invented the Red One Cannon, also known as the Red One Cannon. This cannon is about 3 meters long, with a caliber of 110 to 130 millimeters, weighing over a ton, and an effective range of up to 1500 meters, far exceeding the attack range of cold weapons. This is not only the most advanced equipment of the Ming Dynasty army, but also a national treasure that protects the country.